good afternoon. It is 12 o'clock. Welcome everyone to our January webinar. Uh, it's my favorite one to do every year, uh, talking about what's new, what's good. Um, I'm going to jump right in uh, sharply at 12 today because we have a ton to cover and uh, we have an awesome guest, uh, my good friend Marty Borco, uh, ED of the ULI LA chapter. And so we're going to have a, a great conversation kind of embedded here amongst a lot of uh, exciting updates. So with that, um, let's start with some housekeeping and get into it. Um, thank you as always to our sponsors, LA Department of Water and Power. I really uh, can't say enough. And, and I think, well, I guess I will say a lot about your leadership and, uh, and we appreciate it. Um, housekeeping as always to keep things orderly, we'll keep the, the lines muted. Um, we will, I hope we'll have some time for questions, but if we don't, we will get back to you uh, afterwards via email. And I hope that this is going to generate a lot of questions and ideas um, from you all. And of course, we appreciate your feedback. We'll be recording and everything will go out on Friday as per the huge. Agenda wise, um, tried to uh, keep it keep it simple, but we're going to start with a temperature temperature check. Uh, what's going on in the macro context? What's happening here? Um, talk about recommitment, recommitment. And then ways to plug into all the uh, new partnership opportunities. They're not all new. Some are, are tried and true. And again, hopefully some time for Q&A. Please do reach out to us um, during and after. So uh, what is happening right now? Um, what is the context in which we are, are, are operating? Um, this is wild. I don't know if everybody's been, been paying attention to this, but uh, the Winter Olympics this year are going to be uh, conducted entirely on artificial snow. And that's not because they chose a bad location, right? This is a place that normally would get snow. Um, and uh, that should be concerning. And of course, uh, you can see off in the background there, those, those windmills. And uh, you know, China is installing at a very rapid pace and even um, in sourcing a lot of the raw materials I've been reading. So uh, a lot going on in that picture that should be uh, very attention grabbing for us all. Globally, uh, we're coming out of COP26. Uh, I was personally following this very closely um, and I'm encouraged, right? I'm encouraged about what came out of there and, and really because it's about getting real. They, they recognize, the delegates recognize that they weren't gonna get everything done. They got a lot of good stuff done, especially on adaptation and some justice for the emerging economies that really have had no hand in causing the problem, but are on the front lines of dealing with it. We can think about that in our local context as well. And I think I'll get into that, but there's a theme here. Um, and I should have put a re in front of the commitments here because coming back at the end of this year, everybody to look at what did we say coming out of this conference? And then how does that align with science-based targets uh, that we all need to hit? And I'm encouraged to see so many of you guys setting science-based targets for your own portfolios. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please reach out, um, it's a thing. Next, please. Um, build back better. I was excited about this. I thought it would get done. Um, you know, some, some clever ideas, a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, not happening not happening. So it's up to us. And I always look forward to uh, Larry Fink's letters every year. Um, he's always got uh, some, some pithy quotes for us to chew on. Um, fellow Bruin, a uh, plug uh, for the UCLA folks out there. Um, every company, I'll just read it. Every company and every industry will be transformed by the transition to a net zero world. And I love this one. The question is, will you lead or will you be led, right? And, and you guys are the leaders. Um, you guys are not being led, but I think this message really rings true. And we're seeing, I mean, this massive transformation across all industries. I even saw a TED talk last week from the CEO of um, Equinor, which is Norway's state-owned uh, oil company talking about uh, the, the oil and gas decarbonization coalition. So um, it's happening. It's happening, but is it happening fast enough, right? Um, next, please. 
So shifting to uh, our local weather, what's going on in LA? Um, the, the winds have changed, they are a blowing. Uh, this was last week. Um, anyone lives out in the Claremont area uh, really felt it. I felt crazy winds at my house, but we didn't have any downed trees, thankfully. Uh, though we have had mudslides after the, the rain over Christmas and the holidays. I still got roads closed where I live, which is in Mount Washington here near downtown. And there were some down trees, luckily no power outages, but folks were left without power for, I don't want to exaggerate, it was over 24 hours though. Um, and I think it may have been close to 48. If you're not ready for that, that really, really messes up your life, obviously. Um, so this is happening um, more and more. Uh, folks have been probably following this, not a huge surprise, but, you know, Garcetti is going to take the job as ambassador to India. Um, that's okay. Um, we are, are funded by DWP and we've been through this before. Uh, no matter the administration, our work continues. And uh, this is just a, a throwback to the launch of the LABBC. That's me in the back left there, standing with our founding partners and uh, Mayor Villaraigosa. Um, who, who almost became governor, and he's still out there. Um, he's actually starting a, a CDFI to uh, sponsor more affordable housing development in the city. So uh, we've been through it before, and we will get through this one. And I'm very excited about the new leadership at City Council. I've had the opportunity to meet with a, a few of those folks, the young bloods, and uh, let me tell you, they're serious. Next, please. Um, so this is a Oh, actually, I wanted to intentionally show uh, what we what we said last year. So this was was me a year ago. So what I said we we're going to do, um, we're going to create a new building performance hub. Uh, we're going to do all kinds of cool pilot programs. Uh, EBW was uh, really on hold last year, but we used it as a year of building and infrastructure. And I'm going to talk about some of what we accomplished there. Uh, there were rumblings of a building performance standard, aka a carbon tax, like we see in New York, uh, Washington, D.C., now even in St. Louis, um, and financing. That was last year. Here's this year. It's happening. Um, we are working on the building performance hub. It is going to be called retrofit.la. I'm really stoked about that URL that we were able to grab that. Um, the pilot programs I will get into, those are, are underway and new ones launching. That's going to be in our ways to plug in section here. Um, there's some hot links in here that I hope will work when we send through a PDF of the slides. Um, on the EBW side, we have created a directory of audit and RCX providers because uh, that work still does need to happen. Um, nobody is exempt on the water side. Even if you're exempt on energy because you've achieved Energy Star certification or you've saved enough energy, everybody needs to focus on water. So check that out. Building performance standard, uh, rumors came true. City Council introduced a motion. I, I don't think I put a picture in today, uh, but I was there. Um, we're going to be kicking off a stakeholder engagement process. So how do we take EBWE to the next level? Uh, there are a lot of competing uh, schools of thought about the best way right, to ratchet down carbon emissions over time. And so important that you all um, stay engaged. And I'm excited to work with ULI and our other partner organizations to, to create a, a real platform for commercial real estate to have a voice and a seat at the table as we do this, so that we do it in a way that's creating regulatory certainty that's workable and that ultimately helps build on LA's leadership position as the number one energy star city in the country, right? That's important. Um, I mentioned the new guard at city council. Uh, They're dead serious about all of this stuff. And uh, the financing platform is coming. I'm really excited about that. If anyone is curious about financing options, uh, that is service that we are, are well versed in and are, are doing with several of our, our partners right now. So look out for a, a launch in Q2. Um, I won't read all of this, but a quick shout out to LADWP. Some of these are little known facts, but DWP is the number one, now the number one off taker for green hydrogen in the entire country. Now that's getting at, uh, at, at decarbonization of industry and transportation, really a hard to decarbonize sectors. 
and we're leading in that area. I'm very proud of that. Um, we're in a drought on top of everything else that's going on. You guys may be reading about some of the fires and things that are happening. We're getting, this is a quote, 0% of our allocation from the state. That's zero, that means none from the state. So we need to be smarter with the way that we use water. And I'll talk more about uh, ways to plug in on that. Um, and let's, let's keep moving. Um, equity remains a huge focus you know, coming out of, of BLM and, and even before that. Uh, DWP, again, kudos, um, thanks to Ty Washington, for creating the first racial equity action plan for any utility in the country. And they're not just talking here, this is already being implemented and some of the changes they're making internally are just inspiring. And it's, it's nothing that was uh, intentional or systematic, but we all need to take a, a moment to pause and, and look at our policies, look at our pathways for advancement and see, are there unintentional sort of uh, ceilings in place for folks that are starting, uh, let's say it's a janitor and they want to become an engineer. Is that possible? Well, now it is, um, thanks to this plan. But had they not taken a look, uh, that would not. And, and um, it's really, really important. So we, we all have blind spots and it's important to step back and take a look. LA 100, we've talked about. I'm really excited about some of the work I'm going to get into later in this presentation to operationalize that and huge money coming in behind this too, uh, specifically allocated for our low-income communities. And, and I've been really uh, honored to participate in some of this work and, and learn what accessibility actually means, right? How And how do we move this money and, and how, how to do that the right way? Next, please. Um, so I said, this is a time to, to commit and recommit, and I want to share with you all very transparently where are we at relative to our goals. Um, we've got some aggressive goals. LABBC is already one of the, if not the largest uh, leadership initiative of our kind, but we're a platform. We're a spotlight on your work, right? We try to help. We try to make a difference, but really we're highlighting you guys, and so we try to escalate these commitments and work together to spiral upwards, right? Um, our target is 150 million square feet. That works out to roughly the top 10% uh, of buildings uh, by square footage in the city. Um, Got to choose round numbers. So let's say it's a thousand buildings. The other numbers, 22 and 22.5 are very precise though for a reason. That's because they're science-based targets. And this was a lot of hard work um, by a team of people uh, that, that uh, crunched the numbers and figured out what does LA need to do in our existing building stock in our climate zone to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement, right? Which is 1.5 C. Um, those who've been following this, we already know we've already hit 1.2. So we've only got 0.3 left to go, right? And some of that's baked in. So this, this may sound far away, it is not. We are already quite close to that. Um, that threshold. And so these science-based targets are very, very important. Next, please. So I'm very proud of the participation. We've got about a 125 million square feet committed. As I said, we're one of the largest, if not the largest uh, initiative of our kind. And that's thanks to all of your ambition and work and commitment. This started 10 years ago, which is insane for me to say. Um, I'm really proud of that, um, but it's time to recommit. Next, please. As we see how this breaks down, we've got 760 buildings enrolled across, as you can see, a very diverse array of property types, uses, sizes, public, private, um, 162 million uh, square feet. Excuse me, I, we're doing better than I thought, but we're not all on track, guys. Um, and this can be for various reasons. We got about 80 million square feet. So I'm, I'm proud to say about half of the 160, it's a good, good chunk. Um, it's on track. We're very well on track. And, and these are uh, really LA's best buildings. We've got 210 or 47 million who uh, made a pledge and something happened. Maybe, uh, maybe that it was too aggressive, but it could just be that we have the wrong point of contact 
you know, we've got 35 million square feet where we know just that it's a data connection issue. And there's tons of churn in the job market right now. We know uh, people moving around, buildings trade. You know, we've been doing this for 10 years. We've been through a full uh, cycle and a half, right? Depending who you talk to in the real estate market. So this is what we need to fix. We need to be able to share transparently where we're at, how close are we to the goal? And so that is the drum that we are going to be uh, beating. And I'm, I'm really uh, excited about it. And I hope you all are as well. I think I've, I've touched on this, but what I'll, I'll highlight is the savings. And, and I should put these into equivalencies, but these are big numbers. These are big numbers. And, and you guys are really making a difference. This matters, but we need to do more. And we need to make sure that we're capturing everybody that's made commitments so that we can really count because it, it is kind of the, the that Cohen, you know, tree falls in the forest. If no one's there, uh, sure it fell, <laughs> but, uh, but it, it doesn't have the same effect, right? We need to have complete data and uh, we need to show how we're doing, including the struggles, right? That's the only way we get better. Next, please. And this is a, another graphic, but you can see the participation is very broad. We've got all the way down from San Pedro to the Valley. So I'm really proud of this uh, spread and we're gonna continue um, as we hit our enrollment window, which is gonna open up in March, looking uh, for, for more of you, more of the leaders to join this platform and share your work, share your struggles and share how it's going and contribute. Um, this is just a recap of uh, the city's science-based targets, but 2025 is just uh, around the corner, right? I think we, we, we lost a year. I feel like we lost two years, and 2021 was a blur, too, trying to forget 2020. Um, we don't have a lot of time, and there's 2030 is a, is a middle goal that, that the IPCC talks a lot about. We need to hit each of these windows. Uh, they get progressively more difficult the slower we are now, right? To the point where it can become impossible. But right now, there is a chance. There is a, a credible scenario in which we get to 2050 and we hit all 17 of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, only one of which is climate, by the way. The others have to do with lifting people out of poverty and feeding people. Um, and, and that also has application here locally as we look around at the, the homelessness issues uh, and the inequity that exists here in our own city. So that's where we got to start, guys. That's, and, and you all, again, are, are leading that, that effort. So it's time to recommit. Um, that's what we're doing. And that's what DWP is doing. That's what the city is doing. And that's what you're doing. Um, so let's get uh, reconnected. Let's refresh. I'm going to talk more about ways to plug in. And we want to get specific. We want to get specific and transparent. We need the data to flow. And we want an action plan with each of you. And, and that can be lighter or deeper. And we'll, we'll talk about what that can look like. But we really look forward to reconnecting with everyone over the next couple of months. If it's not a fit, that's OK. Um, we don't want uh, anyone to be dragged along. We want everybody that's part of this to be uh, really um, you know, leading, right? pulling others along, being the example. Next, please. We do a lot of stuff. You know, we have a great team. Um, we can help with project discovery, business case development, all the uh, all the the buzz terms. But basically, what what we can help do is to identify opportunities. We know who's done what. We know about all the incentive programs. Um, we try to keep a pulse on technology. So you can think of us as an extension of your team. We're not selling anything. Uh, we're here as a resource to you. Um, we understand your business. And uh, we we want to we want to help. So please take advantage of this. If you have not in the past, please do. Um, and we can really help shorten up the project development cycles because we know you have a lot else on your plate. So our team has grown. I'm, I'm really proud of this. Um, and uh, please, um, our collective expertise. We used to have a number. I think in the last year it was like a couple hundred years <laughs> of experience, mostly from uh, Wayne and Les. I think. Next, please. So uh, how to plug in, we've got, we're trying to simplify this into uh, really clear, clear partnership tracks for, uh, for folks to get involved because um, if, it's, if it's too sort of nebulous, it can become confusing. And so we're really trying to make this 
make this clear for everybody and ourselves. Um, water, I talked about the drought. Um, water's too cheap, fact. Um, Salt Lake is drying up. Uh, by the way, the soil is full of arsenic. You know, it's a coincidence. Utah has the cheapest water in the entire country. I read an obituary for the Great Salt Lake the other day, and it's uh, quite sad. It's a sister lake to uh, the lakes Mono Lake up in the Owens Valley, up towards Mammoth, where I just was uh, last week. Um, so we should be concerned about that. And we need to manage our water more intelligently. So we're basically just paying for the infrastructure that brings the water to us, not the water itself. And, and you know, water is life, right? So what if water was ex as expensive as electricity in 10 years, 20 years, the, the ROI would change, right? But we may not have 20 years. We're focused on 2025, 2030, one, one day at a time, man. So next, please. We're, we're bringing it back. Uh, Drop 100 is a campaign that we, we tried a couple of years ago, failed. We, we failed. Um, the goal remains the same, though, and we're going to try again. So we want to get 100 cooling towers committed, and I want each of them to save a million gallons. So we're saving 100 million gallons a year. Um, that's very doable in most towers. I've got case studies I'll show you if you don't believe me. We've got technologies. We've got uh, technical assistance for free. And DWP is ramping up their, uh, their focus in this area too, because this is, this, is the, uh, this, is the, this is it. I mean, this is the biggest opportunity there is. We've done a lot of the, uh, the, the lawns, right? We, we heard of the turf. The turf has been terminated. Um, the cooling towers have not been touched. So please put your hand up if this is uh, something that you've been thinking about, been nervous about. It's time to do something. Next, please. Pilot to portfolio. I'm really excited about this. P2P is our prop tech directory. Um, we uh, have done a building technology showcase every year. Um, it's always a fun event. We're deciding to focus this year on a hard deliverable to make a, a durable resource for everybody to use so that when you're thinking about an opportunity in your building, you wanna know who, who has done this before and who did they use? Um, you'd be shocked at how difficult it can be to find that information. And so we've partnered with the GSA, the government's landlord. They run a program called the Green Proving Ground. It's been going for 10 years um, that's been doing this work but they, as the government, can't say who they use, right? But I can. And so we're going to lift that curtain, get behind the veil. Um, USGBC, Ben has had started the Net Zero Accelerator. Once he left the LACI, he brought that, that idea and that drive with him. And that's been doing great work. A lot of you have probably already been engaged with that. Fifth Wall is the world's largest clean tech VC. And they're based in Venice, Venice, LA, Venice Beach. Um, Let's get their companies involved. Um, AEA, the Association for Energy Affordability, they're the pros in the multifamily space. They've run the statewide low-income weatherization program. Um, we're teamed with them on another state program now, and they will be leading uh, the, the DWP program that everyone's very excited about for affordable multifamily. Um, so we'll have an entire bucket or track of technologies specific application for multifamily. Um, our logo is there because you guys, our LABBC partners, are the best in the business. So we want to know who do you like, who do you use, and include those technologies. And I'm, I'm really excited to be sourcing, um, especially some of the water technologies that have come through your recommendations. Really powerful. And then, of course, the USDOE. They've got tons of smart people, access to the national labs and everything. So I'm going to bring this all together in one place. If it's... Uh, pass through those hurdles and it'll look basically like this. Um, so you'll have, uh, imagine a, a tiled directory. It'll look exactly like basically the, uh, the directory of case studies that we already host on the website, which I'd encourage folks to check out. Um, but these will be profiles of individual uh, technology companies and you'll be able to dig in, actually get in contact and LABBC partners or those who, who choose to uh, apply to become LABBC partners can, can receive technical assistance. So we'll actually help you spec out, develop, and do a pilot with the idea that you take that pilot to portfolio. 
right? That's the idea. We want to uh, develop these scalable models. So coming soon, um, very soon, actually, we're, we're finishing up the content for that and I'm very excited to roll that out in the spring. Next, please. Demand response. Uh, this is a, a big topic. DWP has doubled their target this year um, and uh, looking to grow that. Really, everybody should be part of this. Um, if, you, if you haven't looked at it, please reach out, check it out. There's no cost, there's no construction. Even uh, fully pneumatic buildings can participate and, and are and are achieving huge results. You basically get paid uh, for capacity incentive and for participating. And the, the numbers can be, you know, can be significant and the ROI is infinite, right? Because there's really no cost. Um, but you're also doing a solid to your neighbors. Um, you're, you're helping to enhance grid resilience as it's getting hotter, we need more AC, right? Um, we have windstorms, blah, blah, blah. Um, people have probably read about the duck curve. We got too much solar. That's a, a weird problem to have, but we do. So storage is, is the other important part of this. Um, but your demand charges, and we're talking about in LADWP territory here, are set for the whole year based off of your peak. So if someone messes up and, and you have a spike one day, you're stuck with that as your demand charge for the whole year. So that can have huge uh, financial downside consequences if it's not sort of uh, carefully managed. And weather is weird. Occupancy is super weird still. So definitely something to, to focus on. Um, next, please. Net zero retrofits uh, was a, you know, sounded like a fantasy not that long ago. Um, it's happening. It's happening. And I'm, I really, uh, this has been so fun over the last year, um, engaging with our first cohort of, of low carbon leaders. But this is what, you know, this is what a net zero retrofit uh, sort of broadly um, includes, right? This is nothing new, but next, please. Um, so in exchange for help from us and our partners at the DOE and the National Renewable Energy Lab, um, and other folks, which I'll get into, uh, we're looking for uh, some, I guess, extra commitment beyond what the standard LABBC uh, piece is. And that's really related to publishing your plan, which is like a case study. Um, there's not a commitment to get to net zero in two years, but in a two year time period to come up with a real watertight bulletproof plan um, that shows how you're gonna get there. And how are you going to zero out if you, if you can't get to zero with, with credible credits? I'm excited to be learning more about that. Um, and transparency about process. You know, like I said, we want to hear about the challenges. I don't like the sort of Pollyanna, oh, so easy, so great. No, none of this is easy. And, and no one benefits from, uh, from that, the, the kind of uh, overly optimistic or positive stories. So um, it's not easy but we're making awesome progress and I'm super excited about that. Next, please. So this is our initial cohort. These are the folks that, that uh, stepped up um, last year when I announced this and made tremendous progress. All of these projects are very different, um, different uses, right? Different opportunities, different challenges and uh, really excited to continue the work with these guys. We got five more spots. So we don't have unlimited capacity and our, our team has grown, but we, we do have limited budget, right? And, and time in the day. So if this is a, something that you feel ready to tackle, please do reach out. Um, our enrollment window for this again is gonna be March through May. I'll hit on that again later, but, but this is doable. This is very, very doable and, and we're here to help. Next, please. So now I'd like to transition and invite uh, Marty. I'm super excited about our collaboration, um, but Marty, if you could uh, quickly introduce yourself and let's, let's talk about what we got going on together. Great, thanks so much, David. And it's great to be here with you guys today. My name is Marty Borco. I'm the executive director of the Los Angeles District Council for the Urban Land Institute. And I can uh, I can kick us off here, Marty. But I was I was really excited, you know, as I got um, some more time on my hands to get out and start networking again and and do events. You know, ULI was the first place I went, 
And uh, we got introduced and, and out of our first conversation, we were talking about the low carbon leaders, the, the initiative I was just speaking about. And as, as luck would have it, um, ULI uh, Global and, and the Greenprint Foundation had this, this net zero imperative. And so I wonder if you could just say a, a few words about that, but I, was, I, was, uh, I love that synchronicity that happened. Yeah, absolutely. Let me maybe um, help a, a little bit of background about, about ULI um, as, as an organization. You know, our mission is to help shape the future of the built environment for a transformative impact in communities worldwide. So we're a global organization, and, and here in LA, I represent the Los Angeles District Council, about 200, uh, 2,000 members, really focused in the real estate industry. And we do that by connecting our, our diverse membership base um, both locally and globally. We try to inspire our um, real estate community through best practices for equitable and sustainable land use by education, convening, mentoring, and knowledge sharing. And we try to lead in, in solving community and real estate challenges through the kind of collective work that we do. So, you know, really important for us, David, as you do that, is we don't do that in a silo. Um, we really, uh, it's very important for us to work with partner organizations and you know, in looking at your slide of, of your membership and, and, and ULI's membership, we share a lot of the same kind of member uh, member groups and member organizations. So really important that we um, that we do these things together. Um, you know, our key initiatives in, in our strategic plan as we move forward are really around net zero, around housing and homelessness, and around social equity. So the conversations that, that we've been having with you and the opportunity to do work with the net zero imperative is, is so important. And that came through a, a grant application that we jointly did between um, LABBC and ULI to get one of ULI nationals, um, actually international um, ULI uh, grants to be able to um, look at how we might work together to talk about uh, strategies for net zero in, in Los Angeles. And we'll talk a little bit more about the, the focus of, of the grant that we won. But um, you know, in my mind, it's a great collaborative um, opportunity and a chance for us to um, work together in our community and uh, with the focus of, of your guys' uh, expertise and experience and those of, the UL, of ULI and our members. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's it's been a blast so far. And and let's let's drill in. Let's drill in on the next slide. We'll talk about um, where we're focused. And um, I think it was last week we sat in on a call with the other uh, grantees, and it was so cool. I mean, two projects in China, um, one or two in Europe, and others sprinkled throughout the U.S. And one in Austin, which also owns uh, has a municipally owned utility. So some really cool cool parallels, but. Um, Ours is, is focused on Bunker Hill. So it's very place-based. We've got a lot of LABBC partners and ULI members concentrated there. Of course, that's that's now the, the central business district, but it used to be, uh, look like that, that picture on the left, which is so wild. Um, our friend, Tim Kawahara, who introduced us, um, ED at the Zyman Center at UCLA, gave a, an awesome presentation that he, he does um, as part of his work, but he did a little private one for us uh, on the history here. And it was so, so cool to see. And then of course there was the Grand Ave project, um, which which was uh, fairly recent, but that I think was the third re-envisioning of, of Bunker Hill after the, the CRA um, helped to transform it from, you know, little, little Victorians with picket fences, you know, moved all those up to Heritage Square by, by my house. and. Now we got uh, Frank Gehry stuff happening there, and and so the next phase is is to to decarbonize, right, and and modernize, um, and really try to you know get that nice Venn diagram going, like you said, between decarbonization, you know, net zero, and social equity um, that that can happen, and and of course you know creative tech and and uh, and and back to the Larry Fink slide, you know everybody makes money, right? We we do well, so. Um, on the next slide, we've got um, the core team members. So we're very proud to partner, of course, with, with you guys at ULI, um, but other team members include IBI, they're an architecture firm that's helping us create uh, the briefing book and they'll be supporting on the, the release and, and the Innovation Awards event. We're excited about their virtual event platform and just tremendous resources there. 
Um, and then other partners include, of course, the DOE, City, um, NREL is involved, Arab is stepping up as a, as a sponsor, and of course, DWP, Sustento Group is my firm, and uh, City Zenith is a leading provider of, of digital twin technology, which is, if you haven't heard about that, look it up, it's uh, quite cool. And I think that's going to help us to visualize and the modeling from, from our other partners here, uh, what is a, a pretty complex opportunity. The idea is um, to leverage the existing infrastructure. So there's a, a chilled water plant under Bunker Hill, currently serves X number of buildings, but could be expanded to, ser to serve a lot more. And a lot of those buildings already have their own building level chilled water plants. So how can we optimize across multiple buildings, multiple use types, multiple owners on the basis of carbon and cost and take advantage of, of time of use, different peaks, um, and what's the business case with that? And I'm, I'm super, super stoked. Uh, if you wanna say a little uh, about the meeting we had with uh, the central plant operator, but um, it, the ball is rolling. I'm pretty excited about this. So, and the, the wonderful thing that, you know, from our perspective is this is really an action oriented proposal, right? Um, it's really something that at the end of the day, we'll be able to hopefully make some key recommendations about how to create this distributed energy district and take advantage of the resources are there. And uh, really hopefully through the partners and through the recommendations we made, um, see some things moving forward toward the goals that we've been talking about. Yeah, and, and the thing that, that stuck with me from the conversation with the, the central plant owner was that they've done this before. And in Chicago, you know, where they started with uh, a single central plant with, you know, 10 buildings and they built that up expanded it and hooked up satellite plants and eventually got to 150 buildings, right? And so there's precedent for this um, in Chicago, right? Not, not such a, you know, it's not Mars. Um, it's, it's conceivable that we could pull this off, right? And, and I think with ULI's involvement and the folks on this page, we can get there. So um, yeah. I was thinking curious. even closer to home, you know, we're seeing case studies and learning about best practices in Portland. Um, um, and in Toronto. So it's, it's really to build that knowledge base to be able to, for us at ULI to kind of, you know, share and, and, um, and really be leaders in kind of uh, the best practices and who's doing what and then apply those in, in for us here in Los Angeles. Right. And, and we'll be doing that through a, a technical assistance panel or a TAP. So really, really excited to, to collaborate with those, those panelists and and we will be um, releasing the results of that analysis of the panelists analysis, which will take place in April at the awards event in, in uh, early June. So um, this is all headed towards somewhere and we're gonna be reporting out um, at the Innovation Awards. So, so really, really stoked about the progress here. Um, Marty, I think we have the next slide is talking about some of what yeah. Uh, ULI's got planned for the rest of the year. Right. So I wanted to give you a, a moment to well, I appreciate that. Over that. Thanks, David. And and you know, for us, it, you know, this is a really important part. As I said, you know, one of our, our key um, goals and initiatives is around um, net zero, but it's also about um, uh, social equity and, and about housing and homelessness in our community, because we all know those are critical issues. We also know they're all very much tied together. Um, and so in the coming, just to share with you some of the things that we're doing, and we'd love to, you know, continue to get participation from you. We have our signature event, which is Urban Marketplace, which is the theme this year. Um, last year, we weren't able to do it in person, but um, this is, we're celebrating our actually 21st anniversary of Urban Marketplace, which is really an opportunity to share with all of our communities. We're not just when we say ULI LA, it's not just the city of Los Angeles, it's all 88 um, cities that make up our, our community. And Urban Marketplace is a place to share um, ideas and, and best practices. And, and this year, the, the theme is advancing equity through infrastructure. And as David was talking about, it, it's, it's all kinds of infrastructure. You can talk about physical infrastructure, of, you know, how do we deal with issues of, of water, sewer, electrical, but it's also social infrastructure. Um, of, of education, of, of uh, support services, and, um, and, and even, you know, uh, technology infrastructure. So we're really focused around it. It's a full day event. 
It's going to be happening at the cathedral um, here in, in downtown on, on March 29th. And again, I think um, we put into the chat um, ULI's um, uh, website page. So there's always opportunity to find out more about what we're doing. We're also involved in Urban Plan, which is really our educational focus. Uh, we've got a couple of different, it shows up twice here, but it's actually just one Urban Plan that we do. And this time we're focused on Urban Plan for public officials. And it, it's so important that our public officials understand the development process and understand how development gets done and the critical role that they play as public officials, but also an understanding of the role of nonprofits like ourselves in LABBC and about the development community. So we host, it's, it's a, really a hands-on role-playing uh, day where we actually play with Lego blocks. We have a development scenario that we, that we put forward. And each of the public sector officials has to play a role as a designer, as a finance person, as a community activist. And so they, they get step out of their comfort zone and play a little bit with what are the things that it takes to do development. Um, in May, we'll be holding our uh, Homelessness Summit 2.0. We were able to hold a, um, our first one on March of 2020, days before uh, the, the lockdown for, with the pandemic. But this is really focused on moving forward and thinking about housing now. Um, we've continued to do work around um, housing and homelessness, but um, the 2.0 Summit is really focused, as I say, on housing now and, and really focused on temporary supportive housing. How do we start to move the needle to create opportunities for more permanent supportive housing, but really look at the things that we can do. And, you know, we've been talking with, with David and the team uh, um, at LABBC about the notion of, you know, these ideas of, of distributed um, energy districts also might provide some uh, additional capacity that could help support affordable housing or homeless housing and reduce the cost, which is one of the critical issues about providing um, homelessness um, and homeless housing and even affordable housing. So all these things do kind of tie together. We talked about the net zero initiative and the, and the technical advisory panel we'll be doing. And we also have another uh, technical assistance panel that we're, that we're focusing on in, in early spring. That's about um, the big idea about decarbonization of buildings. In it, it's as much of a policy conversation. It's not a specific building, and it's not just about you know mass timber or other uh, or, or one or uh, specific types. But it's really the idea about how can we look and do better think about decarbonizing buildings for both new construction and I think um, also think for retrofitting buildings as we move forward. So that'll be a really important part. And as I said, you know we love the idea of teaming up with the expertise that you guys bring to the table. The last thing I want to talk about is we recently finished a, a report through a grant we run, run through the Randall Lewis Foundation about the case for social equity in real estate. And we're advancing it. It was a three-year uh, grant that we won, and we're into year two now in thinking about how important this idea about social equity is in the real estate community and the development. And so we're moving forward with, you know, how do we begin to um, take some of the recommendations that came out in the first phase, which was the, the white paper we did and make these actionable and are focused on um, our capital markets um, community about where we, how are people really able and willing to spend money on programs that advance social equity. So you can see it's a wide range of, of, of programs that we talk about. It's one of the wonderful things about ULI is we have a broad uh, diverse uh, membership base and we try to have a broad diverse set of, of activities that we do over the year to support those and as I said we're, we're thrilled to do those with partner organizations and and the relationship we've been able to build with LABBC I think is one of the really important ones. I'm we're thrilled to be involved and and I do a lot of Legos so yep. that is <laughs> another area of expertise that I that I bring there, and and I mean you guys really cover the the E, the S, and the G here, and um, you know I'm, I I kid, but this is this is super important. And I was speaking with our colleagues in the mayor's office actually just before this webinar, and um, I think that the reports that you've put out um, for policymakers are so good. And um, that's a, an introduction that you should see in your inbox uh, here later today, Marty. So um, talking about the building performance standard, you know, how do we make that workable, right? And uh, the city wants that to succeed. ULI members want that to succeed. LABBC partners want that to succeed. And so um, it's, that, it's that collaboration. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I think all of these things are team efforts, right? I mean, it's no one group and no one set of individuals are gonna move this thing forward the way we want. Right, the team of teams, yeah. Yep. Or we're, we're heading into the, the conclusion and this is the, the theme, so next please. Um, plug for the Innovation Awards. We're really excited. This is our other uh, big annual event. It's very unique. Lots of you have probably participated in the past. That's uh, encouraged. We like to see uh, repeat, um, you know, folks depending, defending the championships. Um, nominations will open March 1st, along with all of our other ways to get involved. Uh, those are the categories there. They remain the same as last year. Um, we, we, again, we'd love to see repeat people. We also want to see new entrants. So um, please do. Uh, and this is about projects that have completed already. A lot of what we've talked about, you know, with net zero retrofits and so forth, it's a lot of forward looking stuff, right? Which is exciting and important, but we really need to highlight the projects that are happening already, right? What have you guys been doing? How have you taken advantage of uh, this, this quieter time to accelerate projects, to think harder, to step back, look at our blind spots and see where can we do better on the S, right? And make new commitments on the E and the G to support that so that we're not greenwashing, being more transparent. So um, all of that is part of what I consider innovation. You know, a lot of folks think about te technology, gizmos, but it's about people, right? It's about innovative thinking. And that's really um, what I think about, what we think about um, when we talk about innovation at the awards. Um, next, please. Um, this is a, a preview of our uh, webinar calendar for the year ahead. Um, these are a lot of themes that I've touched on already today, but I'm really excited about this. And all of these are timed in a very intentional way so that they make sense for you. So there's a lot of content out there, um, different organizations doing lots of great stuff, but we've, uh, we've thought hard about how to create valuable, concise content that will be relevant for you guys at various points in the year. So you'll be getting emails about this, you'll be seeing social media and all that good stuff, um, but that's, that's a little preview and it's um, a lot of the things that we've touched on today. So with that, cut my slide. Okay. Uh, I, I had a slide in here that said, um, I don't want to live on Mars. I'll, say, I'll just say it. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing all of this uh, innovation, right, towards these ideas of, of, you know, digitizing the self and, you know, becoming a multi-planetary species. And I, I have no desire. I've seen the Martian. I've seen Total Recall. Uh, that's not what I want to do. I want to live here. I want to live right here. And uh, next slide, please. And, you know, this is a, this is, I've used this before, but this is a kind of a, a, a nice image of the power of technology. This is a, a outward zoom um, from the Hollywood sign, taking us all the way back as a little reminder that we are all in this together. Um, and, our community is broader than just uh, the city that we live in, right? And this is what Bezos and Musk and Branson want us to see. And this is what, what the astronauts say really helps it hit home. So I'm gonna try that here. If you look at it from the side, this is a very iconic picture. That's the thickness of our atmosphere. That's where all the planes are flying around. That's where uh, everything is happening in that little thin layer. And if you do the math, it's actually the same ratio as the skin of an apple uh, to the rest of the apples. So I hope that that provides some, some perspective and I'll, I'll, I'll head into conclusion with a couple of quotes. Um, if you wanna go fast, go alone, sure. But if you wanna go far, go together. And, and like Marty said, it's all about the collaboration. It's all about sharing your struggles and your successes so that you can help others, right? So I wanna call upon all of you, our partners to reach out, recommit. Let's make sure we've got the right data. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us what your challenges are, what your objectives are, uh, what's new, what's good. Um, because we can only uh, really make progress collectively if we do go together. 
Um, I also want to thank our collaborating organizations. The same hold true there. Uh, we work with everybody. I appreciate all of your partnership and look forward to seeing all of you as judges at this year's Innovation Awards again. It's, it's all of your unique perspectives that help make those awards meaningful. This is not just you know, my team and you know, some cabal of folks deciding who wins. It's really an, an industry consensus about who's doing the most innovative work. And it's, it's so fun every year. And so thank you all again for your, for your partnership. And I'm looking forward to another uh, exciting event this year. And uh, with that, um, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. I do a lot of Legos and I also <laughs> read a lot of Spider-Man these days. So um, I hope you are all fired up as I am. And, uh, and that is the end of today's presentation. So I hope to hear uh, from all of you. These are just to recap the different ways that you can plug in. Please reach out now uh, with any questions. We'll be opening up for enrollment on March 1st through the end of April and heading into the awards and all of these other exciting opportunities. So um, really excited to hear from all of you and to uh, get to know where you're at and where you're trying to go. So with that, I wanna thank you all for joining and I look forward to a huge year ahead.